All right, I think we're going live here. What's up, family? How are we doing today? Uh, welcome here to our Father's House of Worship, we, where we are having uh, church, obviously live streaming. Uh, this is a place that none of us have ever been before. Um, if you can hear me, please just uh, write in real quick and uh, say hello. Um, I'm going to look on my computer. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Just want to make sure it's all good. Um, let's see. I'm going to look at your guys' posts real quick. All right. So, let's see here. All right. So, can you guys hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Okay, cool. All right, let's get started. Uh, once again, like I said, welcome to our Father's House of Worship. Uh, we will be live streaming uh, every Saturday. Uh, for as long as this takes. Also, Wednesday nights, we will be having uh, Bible studies live stream Sunday through Friday, except for Wednesday. We'll also be uploading our seven-minute devotionals. Um, that's going to be, like I said, Sunday through Friday, except for Wednesday on our YouTube channel. Um, the easiest way to find us is just go to o, uh, ofhow.org, ofhow.org. And that'll link you to our YouTube channel, our Facebook, um, Instagram, and it'll just keep you updated with everything that's going on. So I just wanted to uh, give us a few, just a few more minutes here before we get started. Um, just wanted to say welcome to everybody once again, uh, loving on you guys, praying with you and for you all. Um, definitely, like I said, these are times that none of us have ever lived. Uh, we've never been in a situation like this. So in just a moment, we're about to get into uh, into God's word, and we'll be speaking um, on the topic today, which is this won't defeat us. This won't defeat us. So just want to ask right now that you would uh, continue to pray for us, pray for your family, for your friends, and um, let's just let's just do this. Let's get in this together. So, all right. I see a few people. A few people are in. Jeremy, what's up? Gabriel, what's up? Gabriel, Kim, hello, Kimberly. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Without further ado, um, I think we should just jump into this real quick. So I'm going to exit here. And I'm going to bring this guy up. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, so for starters, I want to say uh, it has been a, obviously everyone is experiencing a tremendous week. It's been pretty crazy for myself. Um, I was sick for a little bit as well. Uh, finally, just yesterday is really when I really started getting better. Uh, Sunday and Monday, I had a little bit of a concerning moment, but I prayed. And uh, on Monday, one o'clock in the morning, I just felt, I felt some chest relief. So continue to pray with me and for me as well. So today I want to uh, just kind of start thinking about, um, you know, the, the biggest question that I have for all of us at this moment in time as we are living in this point in history. And, and I believe that we are here for a reason, that God has placed us here for a reason, right? That you and I were born for such a time as this. Like, what are the chances that you and I get to be alive right here, right now, in this place, in this time, while this is going on? Um, but the question that I have for all of us today is, is what is God saying to us? What is God saying to you personally? What is God saying to our country, to this nation? What is God saying to our world, right? What is God saying? Now, if I were to ask, I don't know, 20 people, what is God saying? We might get 20 different answers as to what people believe God is saying. And, um, and so I'm, I'm reminded, though, of Isaiah, uh, who writes these words. He says, speaking uh, writing these words for God, he says, God says, my, my thoughts are not your thoughts. 
and my ways are not your ways. Are, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So I'm not here today to make any predictions and to tell you uh, this is what's going on and, and, and this is why it's going on. I don't, I don't have that reason, but what I do know and what is steadfast and for sure is that God is for you. That God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. God has said that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. God has told us that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. So I'm not here, like I said, to make predictions and say, well, what's happening and why is this happening? What I do know is that God loves us and God is always calling us to him. God is always saying the time is now, right? The time is now to, to, to love me. The time is now to be in a relationship with me. The time is now. So... As I said, I'm not here to make predictions, but I believe that Jesus Christ has given us the best example, all right? The best example in, in these moments, in these situations, when we, when we go through life and we go through these things, how do we respond? And that's, that's the biggest question that I have for us today. How do we respond in situations like these? So I'm going to turn us to Luke uh, chapter 23. We're going to be looking at verses 26 and onward. So Luke uh, chapter 23, uh, beginning at verse 26. And so here, it's, here it reads, Luke says this, As the guards led Jesus to be crucified, there was a man in the crowd named Simon from Cyrene. He had just arrived from a rural village to keep the feast of the Passover. The guards seized Simon and laid Jesus' cross on him on his shoulders and forced him to walk behind Jesus and carry his cross. Massive crowds gathered to follow Jesus, including a number of women who were wailing with sorrow over him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. You should be weeping for yourselves and for your children. For the day is coming when it will not be the women with children who are blessed, but the childless. Then you will say, the barren women are the most fortunate, those who have never given birth and never nursed a child. People will cry out for the mountains to fall on the top of them, to hide them from all that is to come. For if this is what they do, to someone who's innocent, what will they do to the guilty? What will they do to the guilty? So just for the next few moments, I'd like to speak on the topic entitled, This Won't Defeat Us. This Won't Defeat Us. Would you pray with me uh, wherever you are? Just pray with your family members. If you're alone, pray. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for this moment that we have together that that even though we could not meet physically in our in our church locations god that the body of christ that you and i that we are the church that just because the 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 the, the doors have closed to uh, have the doors have closed it does not mean that the church is closed because you and i are the body of christ and so god i just want to pray right now that you would speak a word to us all that you would Allow us to hear from you that you would give us peace, that you would give us love, that you would give us clarity of mind, that God, you would please in this moment capture our hearts. I pray right now that you would take my ordinary words and turn them into an extra ordinary revelation of your love, your truth, and your peace. God, speak, for we need to hear from you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This man named Simon, he was a gentleman from the northeast part of Africa, Simon. And his plan was to go to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, right? He was going to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover because everybody at one time in their life, if they didn't live near Jerusalem, uh, they wanted to get to Jerusalem, the holy city, to celebrate the Passover, 
And here's Simon. He, he's living in the northeast part of Africa. Can you imagine? He's saving his money. He has a vision. He has a plan. He has to travel quite a bit, right? It wasn't like he could just get on a plane and fly over to Jerusalem. It wasn't like he could just uh, uh, take a train or whatever it might be. I mean, this brother was traveling, whether it was on foot or a donkey. But the point is, this brother is 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 taking his time. He has a vision in his mind to get to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And, and as he's entering upon this city in Jerusalem, there's a man walking down the street with a cross. There's a man walking down the street with a cross. He doesn't know who this man is. There's, there's an uproar in the city. There's, there's all this, there's these crowds that are gathering in. And in his mind, you know, he's going to, 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 to celebrate Passover. And, and all of a sudden, as he's walking through the town, the Roman guards say, hey, you, you there. We, they grab him and they force him into this situation to, to bear the cross of this criminal. Right? This, this, this Jesus who was, who was deemed a criminal, this Jesus who's being put to death, this innocent man. But Simon doesn't know that just yet. He's put in a situation he doesn't like Rome because Rome is, is the oppression, right? The political power at that time. And, and as he has to pick up this cross for Jesus, he's probably thinking, man, this, what did I do? I don't, I don't deserve this. Like, why do I have to pick up this man's cross? I mean, he's just some criminal. I'm over here. But, but he's forced into this situation. He has plans. He has dreams. He has a vision to go to the most holy city just to celebrate Passover with people. And now all of a sudden, he is thrust into this situation. And I can't help but think of you and I today with this COVID-19. The world was operating on, on how it always is. People were planning to get married like this month or next month. People were planning to travel. I was supposed to go to Argentina, right? People were, were, were going to graduate. People were, I mean, life was just going. And I, all of a sudden, you and I were just thrust into this situation. The world was thrust into this situation. None of us expected. I mean, this is, this, what you and I are living is like, it, it, it's something like from a movie, right? It's like, wow. I can't believe that the, that, that the world right now is pretty much just in this situation where we were thrust into this thing. None of us could have ever imagined this. A month ago, two months ago, I just celebrated my 34th birthday, right? In January, if you would have told me in January that I would be living this reality in March, I would have said, no way, that's crazy. But here we are, we're thrust into this situation in a situation that we never planned on being, that we didn't want to be in. And so here is Simon. He's thrust into the situation. The Roman soldiers force him, right, to pick up Jesus' cross. And all he knows about Jesus for the moment is that he's a criminal. And I can't help but wonder, in moments like these, family, that right now, the, the collective... Our human collective cross right now is COVID-19. All of us are carrying this cross right now, COVID-19. We were thrust into a situation that we didn't want to be. And a lot of us, here is Jesus. He has been beaten. He has been up all night. They had taken him to Pilate's court to condemn him. Then Pilate sent him to Herod. Herod sent him back to Pilate. He's tired. He is he, he's weak. He's hungry. And, and as he's trying to carry this cross, and this is what Rome would do, they would beat you so bad. And then when they would lead you out to crucify you, they'd take you through the longest route in the city of Jerusalem because they wanted everybody to see, hey, this is what happens if you mess with Rome. Don't mess with us. It, it was an example to everybody else that, hey, if this is, if this is how you act, this is what's going to happen to you. This will become your reality. And so they want to take Jesus through the longest route possible. And here comes Simon, and he is thrust into this situation to pick up somebody else's cross that isn't his. And so I just want to remind you and I today that, that as you and I have been thrust into this situation, that our collective cross as human beings right now is this, is this virus. We are going to be called to lift each other up. We're going to be called to help each other out. We're going to be called to carry other people's crosses, whatever their burden is, whatever they're going through. And, and I want us to know that while, while this silent enemy, COVID-19, right, 
like, you know, the world is, now we have two different kinds of people. There are people who are totally panicking, right? There are hearts and, and people are suffocating with anxiety and suffocating with fear and people are suffocating with, with worry about the future. On the flip side, there's another category of people who are like, yo, this ain't that big of a deal. Um, we're going to get through this. Typically our younger generations, they can just go out and I'll be okay. I'll be fine. But what if God is calling you and I that this is an opportunity for us to be a witness to the world to bear God's love? And yeah, we're going to be put in this situation, COVID-19, this virus thing, but I'm thinking about what about the aftermath? Because it's not just the virus that you, are, you and I are, are fighting, right? We're also going to be fighting now all of a sudden. There's going to be, you know, people are going to be struggling financially, Right? Emotionally, structurally, relationally, socially. I mean, everything is going to change. Now, I believe with all of my heart that things can change for the better. I believe that you and I can pull together. Right? But even if they didn't, here's, here's why it's going to pull together for the better. Because God has promised. He has promised that Jesus is coming again. And that's the promise that you and I have, that no matter how bad stuff gets, the promise is that Christ is coming again. Yes, things will get worse. They'll continue to get worse. These, maybe this is just a foreshadow of things to come. But God has promised that Jesus Christ is coming again, right? To do away with all of this. Like no matter how much we try to fix things, we can fix things to a certain extent. But then there comes a time where, you know what, we got to just throw up our hands and say, God, we need your help. I can't get past this. I don't, we don't have any, anything else that we can do anymore. What can we do except for call upon God? And so we are put in this situation. So going back to the story. So here's Simon. He's thrust into this situation to pick up Jesus's cross. And, and here's the thing. I wonder as Simon is walking down this, carrying this cross, right? Down Jerusalem for such a long time. I wonder if in the beginning of his journey, he thought to himself, man, this, this criminal, I'm carrying this guy's cross. But I wonder if he watched Jesus. Because here's my question. How was Jesus responding to the cross that he had to bear? How did Jesus respond in this, in this terrible situation? And as Simon is carrying Jesus' cross for him, I wonder if from the beginning of his journey that he started, he thought to himself, man, this is such, this is such a nuisance in my, my life right now. This is such an interruption to what my plans were. And now I got to help this guy. Why is this guy's life all of a sudden interrupting me? And I wonder if he got, finally got to the place called Golgotha, right? The place of the school on the hill where they would crucify criminals. I wonder if when he got to that point, he started off bearing Jesus' cross, holding up Jesus' cross and thinking, man, this is such an interruption to my life. This is such a nuisance to my life. I don't want to be in this situation. This isn't fair. Why am I thrust into this situation? But I wonder if by the time he got to the hill, if he had saw Jesus and the way Jesus was bearing his cross, I wonder if he thought to himself, something changed within him. I wonder if he noticed and took, how did Jesus just walk? How was Jesus' heart? How was Jesus' spirit? Because I believe with all of my heart that a lot of times things interrupt our life. Right? There are trials, there are burdens. There are other people's things that they're, that they're suffering, they're going through. And a lot of times it comes into our life as an interruption, <clears throat> and that's the way it feels. And we carry people's crosses. And by the end of the journey, not only was it transformational for them, because we helped them out, but more often than not, carrying other people's crosses is also transformational for us. It transforms us from the inside out. And so... I wonder if, as he saw how Jesus responded to the cross, I wonder if that changed his heart and his mind. And as you and I are living through this situation and we're going through these things, like I said, not only are we dealing physically with this virus, but, but the enemy, we think the enemy, this, 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 this invisible enemy is COVID-19, but the greater enemy is how do we respond? 
How will you and I as human beings respond to this situation? How are we going to show love? Like, are we gonna, are we gonna you know, draw back in fear? Are we gonna draw back in selfishness? Are we gonna draw back in hoarding, right? Going out and buying all this stuff so that nobody else has anything else? Are we gonna go into this, to this, 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 this posture of, you know, oh my gosh, and then act all kinds of crazy? Or are we gonna stand in faith? And are we gonna be driven by God's love to show the world that this is how we respond? Because if you look at Jesus' life, you know, and how he responded time and time and time again, no matter how bad the situation was, no matter how hot and intense his circumstances were, no matter, no matter what Jesus was thrown into, he always responded the same way. His disciples, one of his own disciples, Judas, his boy, he was going to betray him. And Jesus knew this. And on their last meal, their, their last supper meal together, what does Jesus do to his betrayer? to the one who's going to sell him out, to the one who's going to, to uh, uh, tell the religious leaders where Jesus would be praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, what does Jesus do? He takes off his robe and he puts on a servant's towel and he begins to wash the feet of the disciples, even the one that would betray him. And after Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and all the religious guards come in to, to, to arrest Jesus, you know, what does Jesus do? Does, is he there? How does he respond? They, they, they come in with their spears and with their chains and they're ready to arrest a criminal who's never, this person who they call a criminal who's never committed a crime. But how does he respond to that moment, to that cross, to that burden, to that trial, to that tribulation? What does Jesus do? They ask him, are you Jesus of Nazareth? Yeah, I'm, I'm him. Are you looking for him? That's me. And he goes with, with this peace in his heart. He goes, he, he goes, and then, and then they take him to, to Pilate and the Herod, and then back to Pilate. And while he's there, they beat him. I mean, how does Jesus respond when, when they beat him to the point of almost death, when they take a whip with nine tails, and those nine tails have some bones and other pieces of glass attached to it, and as they're whipping him, right? As they're whipping him, and as he's bearing that burden in that trial, how does Jesus respond to that situation? How does Jesus respond when the guards, when they, when they put a, 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 uh, a bag over his head so that he can't see, and then they, they punch him in the face, and they say, prophesy, if you're true prophet, prophesy, who hit you? How does Jesus respond when he's mocked and, and disrespected, and they spit in his face, and they pull on his beard, and how does Jesus respond? Over and over, Jesus responds with love, with faith, with trust. Jesus was so grounded in his Father's love. Jesus was so grounded in his Father's love that no matter what happened, no matter what the situation was, he trusted not in the moment and not in the circumstances, but he trusted and he rested in his Father's love. Jesus understood that, listen, no matter what happens, I know this looks like a bad situation. I know one of my disciples just betrayed me. I know that when I went to the garden, they came to arrest me. I know that they beat me. I know that they've mocked me. I know that they've called me crazy. I know they think that I'm a liar. I know that I'm living in a bad situation. I know that I don't deserve this cross. But how did he respond every single time? Every time he kept on trusting, it was a choice to trust in God. And so you and I are living in this moment right now where it's like, yo, what's going on? We don't even know. It's like every day there's new news, there's new news, there's new news. And we can look to Jesus as our prime example and say, how did Jesus respond to the situations that he was in? How did he live? How, what did he exude? That no matter what came his way, if hate came at him, he responded in love, right? If betrayal came at him, he responded in love. If people called him crazy, he sp responded in love. How did he fight? He fought with love. And so today, as we think about this situation, there's Jesus going from place to place to place, finally to the cross where Simon has to help carry his cross. And then he gets crucified. Nailed, hands, feet. And how does Jesus treat, respond to criminals? How does he act to criminals? 
two criminals that are being crucified. He's in between them. One of them says, Lord, remember me. Remember me when you, when you come again. Remember me and, and when you go into your kingdom. And Jesus says, today I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. It seems like no matter what situation was put, uh, Jesus was put in, no matter how vulnerable, no matter how trying, no matter how hurtful, no matter how scary, no matter what the situation looked like, Jesus kept on responding with full confidence and trust in God. And he kept on responding in love. He even spoke to a criminal and he had the audacity to <sighs> take another breath and still remain conscious enough to say, today I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. So here it is. Here it is, family. The title of today's message is, This Won't Defeat Us. This won't defeat us. This won't defeat us. The only thing that will defeat us is us. COVID-19, whatever may come our way, that won't defeat us. The only thing that will defeat us is us. The question that you and I, like I said, the, the biggest enemy is how will you and I, human beings, respond now to this situation? Will we, will we respond like Jesus? That no matter what situation he was put in, he kept on having that trust and that confidence and exuding love to the world? Or, were, or will we respond another way, right? But the choice is ours. And this is what I want to say. The reason why this won't defeat us, I want to show you this picture in just a moment here, but I want to get into this last scripture as we're closing up. Mark chapter 16 says this, When the Sabbath had ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so that they could anoint Jesus' body. So do you see it? Here come these women, right? Mary, Magdalene, Mary, and Salome. They're coming. They, they went to go buy spices to anoint Jesus' body because for them in their mind, this was the end. I mean, this was it. They're, this was the end of the picture. When they saw the picture of Jesus being crucified and dying, that was it. It was done for them. So they here they go. They make their plans to go buy spices to anoint Jesus' body. But this is what it says. But very early on Sunday morning, they went to the tomb. And when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white and a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. So here they go. They had planned. They were like, yo, this is the end of our story. We've come to anoint Jesus' body and give them that, his proper burial. They go to the tomb, and when they get there, the tomb, <laughs> there was a man sitting there in clothes in, in white, and, and he was sitting on the right side, and the women were shocked. Then the angel said, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified, but he isn't here. He is risen. I know you've gone to look for the dead person. I know you've gone to look for your dead son, for your dead rabbi. I know you've gone to look for this situation and you thought that it was dead, but guess what? The tomb is empty. I know that that's what you thought. You assumed that this was a dead situation, but the tomb is empty. And here's what I want to say is that you and I, here's Simon helping Jesus carry the cross. And this is a great picture of you and I that as we go through this season of, of COVID-19, however long it's going to last, and even the aftermath of COVID-19 at an economical level, at a structural level, at a social level, at a spiritual level, at a emotional, mental, relational, all these different levels, you and I are going to be called to help carry the crosses of other people. Not only, you know, are we going to be having at moments to carry our cross, but we need to collectively help each other out in this moment of crisis and continue, right? And continue to trust in God and continue to call out on God as we do so. And so here's this collective cross that you and I are, are, are that, that we're, we're embracing. But if you look just at the cross, if you look just at the cross, you are looking at an incomplete picture. 
If you look just at COVID-19, you and I are looking at an incomplete picture. If you look just at your problem, you're looking at an incomplete picture. If you look just at your trial, if you look just at your, at your tribulation, if you look at just whatever you're going through and all you can see is the bad, all you can see is the problem, all you can see is the curse, all you can see is the tragedy, all you can see is the, 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 the pandemic. Is that, if that's all that you can see, then you and I are looking at an incomplete picture because you cannot look at the cross without looking at resurrection. You cannot look at the cross without looking at resurrection. They go hand in hand. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like two peas in a pod. It's like that relationship, that marriage, where if you see if you see that man, you're going to see that woman because you see them all to the time. They go hand in hand. So no matter what, if you and I are going through this situation in our life and we're looking at this bad situation, we're looking at COVID-19 and we're looking at the aftermath, and if you keep your eyes just focused on that and you think that's the end of the story, if you think that's the whole narrative, if you think that's the main picture, you and I are looking at it wrong because you and I cannot look at the cross without resurrection. So you and I got to look at COVID-19 and understand that resurrection is coming. You and I have got to look at COVID-19 and understand that resurrection is coming. You and I have got to look at COVID-19 and understand that resurrection is coming, that no matter what we're going through, resurrection is coming. I remember the days In Exodus, it says that the Pharaoh at that time was afflicting the children of Israel, afflicting them and killing them, afflicting them and killing them. But the Bible says this, the more he afflicted them, the more they multiplied. The more they afflicted them, he afflicted them, the more they multiplied. And I think about us, the more we're afflicted in this situation, the more you and I are going to multiply. We're going to multiply in our spiritual strength. We're going to multiply in our love muscle. We're going to multiply in our faith uh, uh, abilities. You and I, that no matter how much we're going to be afflicted, this is the opportunity for you and I to join collectively and say, yes, right now we're all bearing collectively as a humanity this cross. But now we are called to look to God, to trust in Jesus, And know that no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. That no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. That we can stay grounded and rested in the love of our Father. And know that He's with us even unto the end of this world. Would you pray with me? God in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity to to just spend with my my family and friends over social media. Yeah, sure, we've never had church like this before. Um, We've never even lived this before. This is all something totally brand new to each and every one of us. But God, we want to turn our faith and our hearts and attention to you. And like Jesus, no matter what situation he was put in, he always responded in trust, in faith, in love, and obedience to you. And God, what Jesus lived, what he spoke, what he walked, it revealed the condition of his heart. And so today, God, we want to have a good heart condition. We want to be able to respond, to speak, and to live with this Christ in us. And so today, if you've never accepted Christ, today you want to re-accept Christ, or today you, you're really not even sure. Maybe you're listening and you're tuning in, you're not even sure about what was just said. Maybe a lot of it was like, just went over your head and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm not really sure about any of this. It's okay. But what I want to say is this, at this moment, all of us, joint, jointly, collectively, we can all just invite Christ into our hearts, into our life. 
So whether you want to do it you know, out loud or just in your mind, in your thoughts, I want to take this time to give you the opportunity to say yes to Christ. Just to say, Christ, I don't even know you yet, but I want to start and I want to invite you into my life and into my heart and allow me to be grounded in who you are. We thank you so much for hearing us. We thank you for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, family, um, that was my first time doing that, and uh, it won't be the last. We will be back next week, like I said. Please tune in with us. Go to ofhow.org, ofhow.org, um, and that way you can get all of our information, what's going to be happening. We're going to be having live uh, so devotionals every day. It's called, it's called this live social. Every day it'll be uploaded um, at 6 a.m., so you can watch it at 6 a.m. Uh, when you wake up, or if you want to wait later, you can watch it with your family. That's, that'll be a great opportunity for the family to come together and watch that. Also, we want to ask you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, because once we get uh, a thousand uh, subscriptions, we can go live. Um, uh, we can go live on our, our, our phones, our cell phones, right? And we want to have multiple platforms as we go live. Um, so not only do we want to be live on Facebook, we want to be live on Instagram, we want to be live on YouTube. Um, if this message was at all helpful, you know, we're going to ask that you please share it and spread it out. Uh, it'll be uploaded a little bit later today. Also, don't miss out. Uh, our pastor, Pastor Robbins, is going to be speaking at 12 o'clock live. So don't miss out at that. If you want to, if you want to get another word, double dose uh, of God's word today, 12 o'clock, same platform right here on this page. You can watch him live. Um, other than that, family, I love you all. Uh, talk to you soon and uh, pray. keep on praying for each other. And like I said, let's, let's respond uh, the way that Jesus responded to situations. And, and let's be like Simon, right? Even though he was thrust into that situation and what he was saying, man, I don't want to carry this guy's cross. A lot of times, us carrying other people's crosses, is not trans it's not only transformational for the person that we're helping, but it's also transformational for us, right? And it begins to change the way we think about other people who we've never met. All right. Love you guys. Uh, have a good one. Say hi to the family. Ciao.